Well, I'm going to try to make this a, a short video. You know, Grace. So, somehow, one way or another, There is a message in the Bible of obedience when it comes to grace. Think about this. In the Old Testament, and this just crossed my mind as I'm making this video. Rock Island Books made a video a few years ago of grace. And if you find this video... They say some things in this video that I'm totally against. Because of what they say in this video does not add up. See, people in the Old Testament, just like people today, there are a lot of people that are obedient to God. And grace is first brought up in Genesis. But if you find out who had grace in the Old Testament, you'll find out that they were servants of God. They were obedient. The people that had the, the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, that's how these people were. They were righteous. They walked upright. So, this video the Rock Island Books made, it's only like a two and a half minute video, said some things that I was against. What did they say? Grace. Of course, they put unmerited favor. And then they said, given freely without conditions or obligation by the giver if that was true and it's not I'll say it again so people can ponder on this given freely without conditions or obligation by the giver if that was true then why would you have to have the Holy Spirit to have God's grace? Clearly, no one had grace without having the Holy Spirit. Just because you don't see in the Old Testament that all these people had the Holy Spirit, you can bet they did. Is there a message in the New Testament how to receive the Holy Spirit. Again, if you could get grace from God without having the Holy Spirit, then you wouldn't need the Holy Spirit. And you would have never needed Jesus Christ to die for your sins, to cover you under his blood. Because you're saved by grace. You're not saved by faith. Not faith alone. Not faith plus works. You're saved by grace. Again, if you go back and you look in the New Testament, it actually says you're saved by grace in a scripture where faith is not even even mentioned. Just because you have to have faith and just because you should have works, I didn't say you had to have it. I said you should because I'm not trying to say anything other than making a bold statement. I'm going to say you have to have works, but I'm not preaching works. I'm not even preaching faith. 
I'm preaching grace here. Should have never brought up faith in the first place and should have never brought up works in the first place. You're saved by grace. If God gave grace freely to people, we would have never needed Christ and we would have never needed the Holy Spirit. But how do you receive the Holy Spirit? There's conditions to receive the Holy Spirit. So how can there be a message that God has given freely without conditions or obligation grace? Everything mentioned in the Bible that has anything to do with being saved gives you a message of doing something. See, that's why I'm saying it is with conditions, not without conditions. See, Rock Island Books has made a lot of videos that I've watched lately that I didn't watch in the past that I'm totally against. Because again, there is a way to come out of the darkness and into the light. And your free will has to be a part of it. Your free will has to have a part of repentance. Your free will has to have something to do with humbleness. Your free will has to have something to do with surrendering. So let me ask you, how could someone be covered under the blood if they're in the darkness? There's no such thing. So am I saying that there is a condition to come out of darkness? to be saved, to come out of the flesh to be saved? Yes, there is. So where would God give someone grace that is not going to do what the Bible says? No such thing. The only grace that I could possibly think that somebody could get outside of totally devoting your life to Christ would be someone that did not know about Christ and their conscience. So basically... Someone out here that did not know about Christ would not be out here doing something that their conscience would be the opposite of. What I'm saying is, if I had a conscience and I did something to someone, it would bear on me that I was wrong. But I'm trying to figure out why Rock Island Books would say the definition of grace from God is given freely without conditions. Does it say that you can be saved without believing if you think it's simply believing? I mean, I understand if I was on my deathbed and I asked Christ into my life or change my heart, make me new or whatever somebody out here wants to say, this is an excuse that a lot of people give the guy on the cross next to Christ. Here's the deal. The guy was humble. That's what God wants. And God can save whomever he chooses. But I'm going to tell you this. If you don't see a message in the Bible of saving by a change of an individual.
then how could that, how could this possibly be? David's salvation was on the line for what he did. His salvation was no longer on the line when basically he apologized. He repented and basically asked God for forgiveness from the things that he did. And do you know that I just got done watching or hearing something where someone talked about what David said in Psalms 51? David asked God for a heart fix. Because remember, this stuff comes from the heart. The Bible says all this. So basically, a person being in sin, I don't even want to use Paul as an example, but I already have by using his name. If it was the things that he was doing that made him a child of wrath, and a child of disobedience. Um, and he no longer was. It's got to be from a change. I understand the guy on the cross next to Christ couldn't jump down from the cross, survive, a next, survive another year and change. It's a different circumstance than you giving your life to Christ and living another 10 years and serving Christ versus, uh, I'm just telling you, there is no such thing that grace is given freely without conditions or obligation by the giver. Because you're not going to have God's grace and him accept you into the kingdom if you if you never forgive someone. Because you won't be forgiven. You mean there's a condition that you need to be forgiven to get God's grace? Sure sounds like it to me in the Bible. How do you how are your sins forgotten? No one had God's grace before they received the Holy Spirit. There's no way. And by the way, how can you be saved by grace? Because you can deny all ungodliness and worldly lust. If you hear anybody out here that truly speaks the truth about the Holy Spirit, you'll hear them say that the Holy Spirit helps them on their sins get to where they live a righteous life. That's what the Holy Spirit's job is. Not to just convict, but to help. This is how you can be saved. But I'm going to tell you this, it took your part. For me to sit here and say you can be saved and never do anything and never lift up a finger, never say nothing whatsoever. That's what it would sound like to me if I read that. What I just read, given freely without any conditions by the giver. Doesn't sound like to me that's how the Bible professes that we're saved. Even calling upon the Lord and being saved re even requires someone calling upon the Lord. Is that obedience? Remember at the end of the day that there is a reason why a person's wicked. And there's a reason why salvation isn't granted to the wicked. And there's a reason why there will be a judgment one day for the wicked. And the Lord is not happy because of it. And there's clearly a reason why a person's wicked, what they're doing. And that is where somebody that has a conscience that listens upon their conscience could be saved not knowing about Jesus Christ. 
by not doing what they should not be doing. All right, I wanted to point this out. What does God's grace do? It teaches a person to deny all ungodliness and worldly lust. That's exactly how you can be righteous, and that's exactly how you can be saved. But your free will still had to match the will of God. And the only way a person was going to know the will of God again is what it says in the Bible, not to be conformed. Because if you're conformed, you cannot know the will, the perfect will of God. All right. That's enough of the video. People are not getting the message right when it comes to grace. And I could see how something like that could lead someone astray listening to a message that I just read to y'all.